And how important this Advent? If someone asks, what does perfect beauty look like? Lift up your own face and say, like this. If someone asks, what does an angel's wing look like? Smile. If someone asks, how did Jesus bring back the dead to life again? Don't try to explain what's beyond words. Just kiss him on the cheek, <laughs> like this. And in every moment, conceive. And in that same moment, give birth. Always in the ninth month, just like this. Well, uh, <clears throat> I want to close here. I'm aware of the time. Uh, and I want to give you a chance to share. What have I learned from my 40 years? My 40 years with Rumi. Spiritual growth does not come without wounds. Even those that are the deepest. Even the very person who has wounded you can be your greatest teacher. One of Rumi's most famous teaching stories, I love this one, a chickpea le leaps to the rim of the pot in which he's being boiled. Why are you doing this to me? The cook knocks him back in with his ladle. You think I'm torturing you. No, I'm giving you flavor. Mix with the spices and become a vital human being. Remember in the garden when you drank the rain? It was for this so that now a boiling life can begin again. The most important decisions in life, at least in my life, weren't made on spreadsheets, weighing pros and cons, not by my brain alone, but with a unity of mind and body and will and spirit and heart. Uh, I've learned that you deny your heart uh, at your peril. Once the heart says yes, then it requires all of me. There's no giving of myself halfway. It's as if my entire life was meant for this moment, uh, this uh, decision, this uh, one. But uh, you can't know the rightness of your decision ahead of time. It's called marifat uh, in Islam, it's heart knowledge. Marifat only comes after you say yes. The joy, the madness, the longing, the fire, the wounds, the sacrifice, the intimacy, the one. Only after and all because uh, you said yes. Rumi again. Our task isn't to seek for love, but to find all the barriers within us that we've built against it. Run from what's comfortable. Forget safety. Live where you fear to live. Destroy your reputation. Be notorious. Oh, I, I'm going to have that on my tombstone, I think, or something like that. Be notorious. You're working at it. Yeah, I'm working. Thanks for that. <laughs> I have tried. He, he continues. Not done yet, dear. I have tried prudent planning long enough. From now on, I'll be mad. And uh, I have learned that for me, and there might be other measures for you, uh, but for me, there really will be only one true measure of my life as a human being. As Rumi put it, was I willing to be, quote, sacrificed on the altar of love? So I'm going to close with the, one, of the, one of the stories I tell, I used to tell in almost every one of my classes, I try to figure out a way to smuggle it in somehow and make it connect. Once a man, maybe you've heard me say it before, once a man came to the door of his beloved, he knocked on the door and a sweet voice answered from within, Who is it? 
And uh, the man said, uh, It is I. And the sweet voice turned angry and shouted, Go away. So the man left and wandered the earth for a year, searching for the mystery, searching for the secret, the key, that would unlock the door of his beloved. Well, the man came back exactly one year to the day, one year to the day later, and again knocked on the door of his beloved. And the same sweet voice answered from within, Who is it? This time, the man said, It is you. And the door opened, and he entered, and together they found their bliss. Love now had a face and a name. For Rumi says, in the house of love, there's only room for one. Thanks, everybody. I thought what I would do, we, what we would do now is I, I mentioned that we would take some time to do some sharing. And by the way, th thank you again. This is very personal for me, and I hope I hope that came through. And I'm just glad that you're here to share it with me tonight. It's my way of doing Advent uh, devotions. It was wonderful. Well, <laughs> I, I thought what we would do is uh, thanks, Dean. I thought what we would do is we we're going to have tables set up, but somehow the tables mysteriously didn't uh, appear. So if, if we could maybe gather in groups, if we could just turn chairs and, and gather in groups of like six to eight, and if you brought something from Rumi to share with each other, uh, uh, that would, how many of you brought something from Rumi to share? Well, that may not work then. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you've got some. Why don't I use the microphone? Barb, Joe. So maybe what we could do is have people come forward. What do you think? How should maybe people could come forward and share? There's four of us. Okay. Well, I know, but we've only got about six or seven total. So maybe what we would do is uh, maybe come up and share with each other, and just have a time of of sharing. Then maybe we could have a conversation. How does that sound to you? As a way to proceed.